Staging a settlement should not be an easy undertaking. Total War Warhammer 3 has reworked how sieges work. With new ways of attacking as well as defending, every inch taken will cost dearly. Settlement maps are now larger, and we've introduced more variety of maps than in previous games. With the fall of the Turtle Gate, Miao Ying moves her army from the Snake Gate to Wei Jin in an attempt to bolster the city's defenses and drive Siege out of Cathay. Wei Jin, capital of the Celestial Dragon Empire, is a three-walled fortress and a testament to Cathay's architectural brilliance. When defending, walls are the first defense against an attacking army, but by no means the last. We now have the option to turn the streets into a bloody maze. Using supplies, we can build towers, barricades, and traps. Prepare and plan your defense, but never rest easy. The first object for any attacker to overcome is the wall-mounted towers. Unfortunately for our Sinch invaders, towers now have wider capture areas, so defenders don't need to be as close for them to be active. This means we can spread our docked units across a larger area and pepper the invaders with arrows, bullets, and artillery on their approach. The might of Grand Cathay isn't enough to keep Sinch from breaching the walls. The walls will soon fall. It's time to fall back to our secondary positions within the city. Our defense now lies with our barricades, traps, and towers. We'll need a new currency introduced in Warhammer 3, supplies. We'll start the defense with a base number of supplies and can gain more during combat by holding locations around the settlement. Minor supply, key building, and victory points. These key points have pre-designated build locations for construction. Once a barricade or tower is constructed, it can be dismantled for a refund of supplies and rebuilt elsewhere. But keep in mind, construction and dismantling is a lengthy process. Barricades and towers are destroyed if their health reaches zero or if the supply, building, or victory point they're attached to is taken by the attackers. If this occurs, your supplies are not refunded. It's worth noting that whilst attackers can capture points, they cannot build barricades or towers. Rather than a messy brawl in the streets, Warhammer 3's sieges are about defenders controlling the flow of battle, using a settlement's architecture to plan and execute layered fallbacks and hardpoints, where they can chip away at an attacker's forces. To this end, settlements have become multi-leveled with bridges and upper tiers that cross over streets, giving ranged units more opportunities to shine. A good many of these bridges and overlooks are dockable like the primary walls, giving our soldiers all the buffs and benefits of any other docked unit. In sieges, both the attacker and defender's role are tactically more challenging and more rewarding. Settlements in Warhammer 3 have been designed with more open areas and strategic avenues to hide troops in. The avenues are the perfect ambush spot, making flanking and devastating charges a more viable tactical strategy. In overview, Warhammer 3's sieges offer a diverse array of fresh settlements to overcome and protect. They allow defenders to prepare for a new kind of battle occurring after the attackers have taken the primary walls. They add a new currency to manage and spend on fortifying defensive fallback positions with barricades, towers, and traps which are used to further repel invaders. They allow for a multi-layered experience where units can be docked to overlooks and walls within the settlement itself and encourages real-time reorganizing of defenses to adapt to an ever-changing battle. All of these features, coupled with dynamic new settlement designs, make for challenging and satisfying sieges packed with highs, lows, and phenomenal visuals. Wei Jin has fallen, but the forces of Tsinch will struggle to reach the celestial city above. The Dragon Emperor is safe for now. Even so, his daughter has barely managed to escape with her life. To Nangao she travels, 